Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q4 of the bi weekly uh, contest 53. Um, minimum XOR sum of two arrays. So, this one, I, I thought it was tricky when I first looked at it, but the key thing is noting that n is only up to 14. Um, so, then this becomes a matching problem where where, you know, for bigger ends, you can actually do stuff like um, maximum bi-party matching and stuff like that, which we're not going to go get into, um, which, you know, you can run for ends, which is bigger, because you can do matching in, like, n cube or something like that. Um, but that said, uh, because n is 14, and also max four is probably not going to be on an interview, not on wood, for a long time, uh, you know, um, yeah, so N is 14 is going to become one of the most hated things you probably hated, uh, which is bit mask dynamic programming. I had to do a video on this at some point, um, like a, a special video just on the bit mask dynamic programming. Maybe I'll use this as an example, uh, so watch out for that. Uh, I'm you know, even as I'm talking now, I'm getting requests to do this in more detail, but. The idea here and is that, okay, you know, for the purpose of matching, um, I know that they said that you can... Oh, actually, I was wrong. For some reason, when I first read this, I, I read that you could rearrange name, nums 1 and nums 2. But, and actually, that would have been slightly more harder, though very slightly, because for the purpose of this problem, it doesn't matter, because you could fix nums 1 is what I mean. Actually, I assume that... You could rearrange nums one, but it doesn't matter because, you know, if you rearrange both arrays, then you might as well only rearrange one away. And in this case, again, I'm going to do a really two-minute bit mask thing, which is that bit mask is just um, is just an array of booleans. You could think about the bit mask is you know, let's say we have something like this. Uh, it's a bit mask, and that's maybe too long for this problem. Um, this is equal to an array of true, false, true, 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 uh, dot, dot, dot. You can maybe even, you know, to, to put it more concisely, just T, F, T, 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 F, T, F, T, F. Mm. Okay, I got a little bit lazy over there. But yeah, so basically you have uh, this, right? And that's basically the idea. And wh what is the point here, right? Is that with N is equal to 14, you can clearly see that um, there are two to the fourteen possibilities here, right? And that's basically the idea of a bit mask. I know that is intimidating to look at bits and stuff like that, um, but that's all that is. It's just an array of bits that you can use to cache because you compress it into a number. Because two to the fourteen, um, what is two to the fourteen? I'm pulling up my calculator right now. Two to the fourteen is sixteen thousand, so that's going to be fast enough. Um, but yeah. Um, and then, and then the funky things that you see here are just operations that are basically, if you want to look at the, the array equivalent, let's say mask is suddenly a, an array of booleans, that's just a mask of x is equal to true, which I know that you can simplify a little bit, um, but you know. And if you look at this mask or this bit shift thing, uh, this is just equivalent to uh, set mask of x is equal to true, and then you do a recursion of it on it, right? And and the bit mask just allows you to memorize it in a easier way. And that's all that that is. Um, I know that I get a lot of questions about it, um, but you know, this is if if we haven't used this yet. Oh, sorry, uh, I, I messed this up actually. If this is equal to force, right? Yeah. Um, so that, this means that if we haven't used this yet. Uh, well, this means that it checks whether this is true, but we check this as you go, the zero part is the false part. So basically, we check if the x element is is not used, we use to we set it to true. We set the, um, we use the x element, and then we just and then the cost of using the x element is just this XOR function, which they give you right. Um, you know, like that's the sum because you want to sum up all the XOR. So you go okay. So let's say for the num sub 1 of index, we match this with the num sub 2 of x, then we use it, and then we do a recursion on it. And that's pretty much it. Um, I know that, you know, this, this looks intimidating if you're not into bit masks, but it really is, that's pretty much it. 
Um, anyway, yeah, so then now for every index, we go from left to right of nums one, one at a time. We go, okay, we have nums one of index. We want to match it with nums two of index x, and then we do a recursion. And then now we look at the next index, and here, like we said, we updated the mask to set that bit to true, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then the dynamic programming part, I'm not going to, you know, dwell in uh, uh, d detail that much because because I think I went over the transition. Um, once we matched all the numbers, we returned zero, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and you of course start with zero and, uh, with the zero index, and this zero just represents. Um, a boolean value of all force values um, and we said infinity and stuff like that but that's pretty much it and I know that I didn't go into detail that much but hopefully that's enough uh, for you to have the idea because um, if you watch the video of me solving lab in the contest I think I solved this in 3-4 minutes and I think that's also you know a lot of the top people solved in 3-5 to five minutes for that reason because they just recognize and practice the bit mask whether that comes up in an interview is another story I personally don't think it should but I don't know, certain OAs, for example, have a way of doing it. So, you know, you let me know how how that goes for you. Um, yeah, that's all I have for this one. So feel free to watch me solve it live during the contest, even though I think for the most part I jumped right straight into it. So you probably just watch me type this up, but, you know. Um, oh, yeah, just to go over the complexity a little bit, I missed that. So index can be from 0 to n. So the number of states is O of n times 2 to the n. And then, you know, and for each one, we do a for loop of n work. So total time is equal to O of n times n or n squared times 2 to the n. Um, yeah, and space is, of course, we have O of 1 for each space. So it's just the number of states, which is all of n times to the n uh, for time for space. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Watch me stop it live next. Back to it. the other one looks more. Let it minimize. Okay. And it's fourteen. This is pretty easy, actually. I didn't I didn't notice the end before. It's just pending for so long. Hmm. Is the server having issues again? Hmm. That would suck. Ready?
think we only have 14. Hmm. Oh, did I? Hmm. Oops. Oh, the pending is slow. Okay, that's not good. This is oh no, whoops, uh, whoopsie daisies. Uh, the testing is too slow for me. I should have done it locally, maybe. Okay, let's see, it should be fast enough. By Yeah, that one's pretty easy. Yeah, I hope that was a good whatever. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Uh, and I will see you later. Uh, good luck later. Bye-bye.